Hi, welcome back to Cubs and Culture, explaining a little bit of statistics and my problems with them. Okay, so this one's mostly going to be about my, uh, about war. War stands for wins above replacement, and the first thing you need to realize, win here does not literally mean a, would they win a game or produce one um, one win in the sense that they win one additional game. Win is just a unit of value. In this case, it means 10 runs. Okay. So if someone says, uh, like Baez is a 2.9, um, uh, war player, what that really means is he produced two point, uh, 29 runs above the replacement level, uh, play. Okay. Um, Okay, and this brings us to what replacement is. Replacement is the amount of runs saved or generated that the uh, league uh, team or the league accepts as a baseline of competence. So let me use sort of um, a really pitched example. A pitcher um, is expected to be competent at his job in terms of offense to produce zero runs. Okay, pitchers aren't about anything that pitchers do at the plate is gravy because pitchers aren't intended to generate runs. Conversely, for a designated hitter to begin, and again, I'm going to make this really pitch, for a designated hitter to be worthwhile because a designated hitter is all about offense, the baseline position for offensive generation is like 100 runs or whatever. Okay, so if I have a guy who offensive um, uh, production was 25 runs, that could be um, really, it could be way above replacement if you're talking a pitcher. It could be way below replacement to, um, if you're talking about like the designated hitter. Okay, so there's a spectrum here <laughs> of what's sort of expected in terms of offense versus defense. Um Capability, and so the reason for that is different defensive positions are uh, less demanding um, because of hit probability or the type of hits that tends to be happen. So, um, the corner outfield spots are um, and first baseman are the least demanding um, the uh, um, defensive positions. Um, just because in the way left field especially is where um uh uh out uh, where um uh hitters tend to be uh people uh, players whose main value comes from offense tend to be dropped okay so it's easier to play a competent corner infield spot uh, corner outfield spot or first base than as opposed to like center field or shortstop or second base okay um then the next easiest is third base, then second base, then shortstop, and then, then catcher, then shortstop. Okay, so um, for a shortstop to be replacement level, his his underlying ability, natural sort of ability, defensively has to be much better than a corner outfield spot, okay? Likewise, for a corner outfielder's offense to be worthwhile, it has to be much better than a, um, a, a shortstop because the shortstop, what he's doing for the team is mostly providing defense. What a corner outfielder is doing is mostly providing offense. Okay, so the reason why I'm bringing this up is this gets at a issue of with war or how people use war. People use war as a proxy for talent all the time but it's not actually about talent it's about the value because there's a, there's always something where um a person's uh, player's war doesn't actually necessarily reflect their talent it also reflects decisions that they they, they made or their teams made okay and i'll use a couple of examples about this so let me just talk about how it's calculated first okay so <clears throat> It's basically defensive runs saved, where um, defensive runs saved are a derived statistic from fielding percentage and range measures, um, error rate, etc. Um, where again, run here isn't literally a run, okay? Um, 
it's um, just a unit of measure. So <clears throat> if you are a shortstop, you are expected to save more runs um, than a uh, corner outfielder to be to be competent because so much of people's spray shots are hitting us towards the um, short shot. That's why it's such a demanding position. Okay, then you take so that's defensive run sale save. Then you take off offensive runs generated. Okay, um, <coughs> um, uh, offensive runs generated, which is exactly the same sort of thing. We know that for X amount of OPS. Um, you will generate a certain run. You also get sort of um, base running into offensive run generated steals or um, scoring from first, um, scoring on from first to home when someone hit um, for, to produce a ruby or whatever. So offensive run generator is just an offensive measure. So war is defensive runs generated, uh, defensive runs saved plus offensive runs um, generated. Plus a positional adjustment, okay? Because again, uh, because of the spectrum, offensively, um, um, shortstops to be worthwhile, a competent shortstop, a replacement level shortstop, um, <clears throat> defensively needs to do less offensively to be replacement level because shortstops are expected to provide less offense. Okay, so <clears throat> just to stick with, um, <coughs> excuse me one sec, just to stick with shortstops, a competent shortstop um, is expected to generate um, 20, uh, if I'm remembering the positional adjustments correctly, uh, uh, 15 runs less than a um, corner outfielder, uh, outfielder. Um, in terms of offense, okay. So if you're doing if you're doing the calculation for a corner outfielder, he's hit with a negative seven point five offensive run or a run adjuster, whereas a um, shortstop is given a plus seven uh, seven point five run adjuster to try to so we get everything is adjusted to so get so that when you when the number finally gets spit out, everyone's on the same plane. Okay, now there's several um, issues with this. One, it's so far down the line that you can always wonder: Are the defensive stats actually being uh, correctly worried, or are we at, should should shortstop be given that much of an advantage over corner outfielder spot, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? My, that's not really what my worry is. My worry is is this number is intended to be um, a measurement of a player's entire value, except there's certain things that are not calculated into it. <coughs> Excuse me. To use bias, for example, is uh, even through the even the, um, last year, where he had something of a down year defensively. He provides at least replacement level on um, defense at second base and shortstop and third base, and therefore probably at least first base as well when he's done, done there. Okay, a person who is competent at all the infield spots is um, competent, just replacement level player, is obviously more valuable than a person who's only capable of replacing like the second baseman, okay? Or you also, and also there's things in which you, the war does not measure like soft skills. So you get someone like Rossi last year, who doesn't um, uh, um, doesn't um, have like his relationship with Lester being a better Lester always it was a better pitcher when Ross caught him that's not included in his war so there's that sort of worry there's also this thing about talent versus value which is going to be the sort of the last topic for today so give me a moment because of the defect defensive spectrum um. Certain positions can, um, uh, uh, certain players who are actually cl fairly close to having um, either replacement level talent, um, uh, 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 replacement level, uh, a talent that would produce replacement level defense can sometimes be mistaken. And sometimes, especially for shortstops, 
people can look okay um, or even look good, <coughs> but if you actually run the numbers, they're terrible for shortstops. The most infamous example of this is Derek Jeter. Um, I don't remember what his career war was, but it ended up being like 75 or something like that. But his defense was awful. It was as a, as a shortstop, he was absolutely shitty. Um, he, he routinely cost the Yankees a game a year and his total career defensive runs saved were a negative 100, which means he, per, he failed to prevent a hundred runs more than the, a baseline expected for a shortstop. Now, Here's the thing. If you look at Jeter, well, he looked fine. Um, but it, but looks can be deceiving, but that's because we don't see value. We see talent. So this is what I meant by war is also reflective of how team history, because if Jeter simply moved to second base, which is sort of a, a similar, not as demanding as shortstop, his entire career would have, he probably would have jumped 5 to 10 war over the course of his career. So it's not that his talent caused him that. It's that the Yankees decided because he looked okay uh, to keep him a shortstop. Give me a one moment. So there's this thing. So because of cases like this, there's also examples like a um, uh, Bagwell has uh, two more career WAR than um, uh, 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 Joe, Joe DiMaggio. But that's not because Joe DiMaggio was on had less talent. It's because he didn't play for two years in World War II. Um, so again, going back to some of my biggest bugaboo boo about this. Our uh, pet peeve is people mistake war for, as a proxy for Hall of Fame worthiness when, in fact, it doesn't measure fame. It measures value. So, for example, at this moment, I think any discussion, uh, Mike Trout's been around forever and he's on pace to put the best war number up ever. Uh, I think any discussion of him being Hall of Fame worthy is way too premature because he's not famous. <laughs> he's not interesting. He's boring. Or to use sort of another pitched example, um, Pete Rose has acceptable war numbers and J war numbers to be in the hall, but of course he's not famous, he's infamous, or Barry Bonds, etc. Um, but it becomes sort of an argument, well, he has enough war. Um, okay, I am ranting at this point. I hope this episode was interesting. I'll be back with a movie review or something tomorrow. I'm on third shift.